In this video, we're going to talk about Adobe Captivate Frames. One of my Patreon subscribers, Alexa, reached out to me and said that she's still struggling to understand frames and how you can use those in your Adobe Captivate project. So today I'm going to try to attempt to uncover that and uh, try and make it easier for everyone to understand. Frames are very much like motion picture frames uh, uh, in a film. You know, you have, uh, in the case of motion picture film, 24 frames per second. And when you show frames uh, back to back so quickly like that, it gives you the illusion of motion. It's not something you literally see in Adobe Captivate. You can't look at one frame of your movie per se. You certainly can go to the timeline and select a moment on the timeline. Even the timeline isn't divided up into those 30 frames that you see. There are five different system variables that work with frames. The first one here is CP info frames per second. This really doesn't give you very much information. And in fact, in all my years of developing Captivate projects, I've never used CP info FPS or frames per second. CP info frame count, this returns the entire number of frames in the project. So if you wanted to use this variable to display on your screen, you could show how many frames were in your entire project, 36,542 frames, let's say, for example. Again, I'm not really sure how you would use that. The two system variables, or sometimes three system variables that I use, are these last three here. CP info current frame, that's useful to store the location of where you might be on a particular spot on your slide. The other two here is CP command go to frame. Now I've underlined command to emphasize that these are kind of like actions because you can assign a value to these and change the behavior of Adobe Captivate. So if you know a frame within your e-learning course that you would like to jump to, kind of like bookmarking in interactive video, you can use these two system variables to go to that particular spot. Now I'm going to show you an example of how you would do that. So here's a very simple set of navigation controls that we could set up here. When you think about the frame number, we don't always know the frame number. This happens to be the first slide in my course but this slide could end up being slide number four, slide number 10 or whatever. And in which case the very beginning of the slide may not be frame number one once I'm finished building my project. So what you can do actually, here's a neat little trick that you can do. On the on enter action of any slide, you can basically write a little advanced action that will store the value of CP info current frame in a variable of your creation. So let's do that right now. So I'm going to click on the advanced action icon. I'll just call this on enter action 01 for slide number one. And we're going to need to create our own variable to store this in temporarily. So I'm going to click on the variables icon. So we'll simply add a new variable, user variable, and I will call this V underscore beginning of slide 01. Click Save, click Close, and now we'll get back to our advanced action. So what we're going to do is we're going to assign that variable we created with a value of the system variable CP info current frame. So again, you know, if this slide ends up being slide number seven or slide number 20, it won't matter. It will store the value of CP info current frame in our own user variable so we can use that number later on. I'm going to save this as an action, click OK, and click close. So if I want to restart the slide with this button right here, we can create an action for that. 
So I'm going to execute advanced actions. It's selected by on enter action, but don't forget to change that once you've written the new advanced action. And we'll start by creating a new advanced action. So this will be restart slide. So what we're going to do in this case is we're going to assign cp command go to frame and resume. The first version of, of this cp command go to frame will simply pause and wait for the learner to click play or something like that. But we want it to start playing right away. So we're going to use the resume version of that. And we're going to assign the value of cp command go to frame and resume with the variable where we stored the beginning of this slide. So let's just find our variable we created here. And we'll save that as an action. Click OK and click Close. Don't forget to make sure that your Restart button is pointing at the Restart Slide Advanced Action. I always forget that. So now let's create a little rewinded fast forward control. So we know that 30 frames a second, let's say we want to go back three seconds. So that would be 90 frames. So let's change the action associated with this. We'll execute advanced actions and we're going to create a new advanced action for this. Let's click the plus icon and we'll call this rewind. And we're going to use an expression command in this case here. Expression allows you to do basic mathematics. So what we're going to do is we're going to say cp command go to frame and resume equals the variable cp info current frame. In other words, where we are. And we're going to select minus the literal value of 90. So 90 frames, that's three seconds, right? So this will rewind where we are currently by three seconds. So I'm going to save that as an action, click OK, click Close, and let's make sure that we've pointed that button to the rewind action. Similarly, we're going to go to our fast forward button here, and we'll execute advanced actions as well. Let's start with Rewind. We'll edit that and duplicate that action. This time we'll call it Fast Forward. And what we're going to do is use the exact same command, except we're going to plus 90 seconds. So we can update that action. Click OK, click Close, and make sure that our button is pointing at the right advanced action script. And so this is all good to go. Let's just do a couple things I like to do all to all my buttons. Make sure we turn on the hand cursor and disable the click sound. Normally I would keep, uh, I would turn off the playback controls. However, I want to I want to show the progress bar on the screen so that you can see that this is in fact actually moving back and forth or restarting the slide as necessary here. So we'll keep that intact. Let's preview this in HTML5 and see how these advanced actions work. So there we go. We've got our restart, fast forward, rewind buttons. Let's restart the slide and watch down here to see what happens. So it takes me back to the beginning of this slide and that's useful, of course, if learners might want to have the ability to start a slide over, perhaps they miss something, or perhaps they are already subject matter experts and they just simply want to fast forward a little bit or rewind a bit if they missed a small portion of it. So this is a great way to use the current frame number of your Adobe Captivate project to give you additional navigation controls. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, hire me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that achieves your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.